Hey uh, folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to a tutorial for Stellaris Console Edition for complete beginners. Stellaris is this wonderful space empire strategy game. Um, it's what's often referred to as a 4X game where the X's stand for um, explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. You are gonna start from a single planet in this huge galaxy and over time you will expand your empire, you will meet other empires, you might engage in diplomacy, you might engage in warfare, you'll research a lot of really amazing technologies, discover cool anomalies, different storylines, and uh, possibly various galaxy-ending horrible threats of doom. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna have to get started. So this first episode, we're really gonna focus on the initial setup of your empire and what that means. So most of the controls will be used with the D-pad over here, of course, A and B to, uh, to select and go back. Um, and yeah, you'll be first, picking your empire. Now you you can select from a pre-made empire over here if you would like. There's a bunch of them that are built in. In addition to that, once you make an empire on your own, it's actually gonna be saved over here so you can play it again. In addition to that though, you will also potentially see your old empires in future games. So one of the things I really like to do actually is I like to make a bunch of custom empires first and then start a game so that I might see some of these custom empires in there, which is kind of cool. But what does it mean to make one? Oh, by the way, you can also just play as a randomized empire if you would like, but we're gonna go and create a new empire because there's a lot of stuff in here to talk about. So one of the things that makes Stellaris different from quite a few other space strategy games is that when you create your empire, you're creating both the empire as well as your primary species. Um, and these two things are kind of disconnected because over the course of the game, you might have many, many different species within your empire. That can happen because, well, maybe you've conquered a planet or maybe you've made friends with someone and um, got a migration treaty going on. So some of their people will come to you and some of your people will go to them. Um, you might find a primitive race and uplift them. You might start creating robot people. There might be a uh, genetic modification in your people that sort of splits your species into more than one. There's all sorts of different reasons. You might have many different species within your empire. So the first step is creating your species and then the second step is sort of design your empire. On screens like this, you can use the right and left bumpers to go between the tabs over here, but let's focus on the species tab. First, you will be picking your appearance. This has no in-game impact whatsoever. Just pick something that you think would look best and is most appropriate for your species. There's lots of different categories over here. Um, some of them are pretty disgusting, like, ooh, look at this, some sort of human thing, ugh, terrible. Um, and some of them are really, really quite cute. Um, I kind of like the platypus people over here. Uh, well, I mean, if you really want cute, you've got these little foxies over there. Just absolutely adorable. Maybe some sort of cat people. We could do some sort of cat people here. So we've got that. All right. So you pick your appearance. And again, this has no true in-game impact, but at the same time, isn't it the most important thing in the game? Next thing over here, we've got our species name. You can type in any species name that you would like. What you can also do is if you hit the Y key and you can see the buttons at the bottom here, you can just randomize your species name. And uh, let's be the Raltech. That actually sounds okay. And you can choose your plural and your adjective version as well. We'll just be Raltech all the way through. I mean, we could be Raltex or something, but no, nope, sometimes it's gonna fit. Name list over here. This is the list that is gonna be used for all of your, your leader names, your default ship names. You can rename your ships. You can do different things like this, but it's kind of cool to have a default naming list. So let's say if we go down and grab one of the mammalian lists over here. So mammalian two for this one. All right, there we go. We've got a few different names. Um, the other thing we might wanna do is change our ship prefix. So by default, all of our ships will start with ISS. Uh, we're the Raltech, so let's go ahead and change us to be um, the maybe RSS or something like that. Raltech spaceship, Ooh, I need to capitalize this. Uh, X, X, there we go. There we go, S, and then S some more over here. Excellent, so all our ships will start with RSS, which seems fine. Okay, now we get the actual gameplay stuff. These are the traits for your species specifically. You can pick up the five traits, but you only have two trait points to spend. And some traits cost you points, like Agrarian 50, Thrifty and Industrious 
um, would all cost, say, two points, for example. If we come down here, the natural sociologist would cost one point. Extremely adaptive would cost four. It's a very powerful pick and very expensive because of that. But then you've also got uh, traits that give you negative points. So they fact effectively give you more points to spend. So non-adaptive is a negative trait. It does bad things for you. Now, how bad is it? It depends, really, on all kinds of different things. We're not going to go through and talk about, you know, how good this trait versus that trait is or anything like that. You're going to want to play a bunch of different species over time with a bunch of different traits. But if you pick negative traits, then you will get points back. So if we pick non-adaptive, now you can see we have four points to spend instead of just two points to spend. So it gives us a few more options. So you know what? I will take non-adaptive. Non-adaptive means that our species is not as good about living on other planets. Your home world will always be considered 100% habitability for you or 100% habitable, right? Your home world, you like it, your species are comfortable living there. But this means that our species would have a harder time being comfortable on other planets we find. It's actually, it's a pretty like harsh penalty, but there are ways to counter it with all kinds of different technology and things down the line. So we'll take non-adaptive. Um, and then I'm gonna take, I don't know, intelligence is pretty good. So we can science faster uh, and maybe industrious. It'll give us more minerals, we're better at mining. You may not know what all these things do right now, which is fine. Um, we're just going to pick this just because we can. So we're at zero trait points left. We could still take two more traits. I could take maybe a minus one trait and then a plus one trait to balance it out. But I'm going to call this good enough. There's no reason you have to spend all your traits at all. Just pick something that you think will be kind of interesting and, and go from there. Next, we've got our initial ruler over here. Depending on how your government works, which will we will see on the empire screen uh your ruler might be you know sort of an elected president might be a dictator for life might be a king or a queen could be all kinds of different things um i'm just going to randomize my leader's name so my first leader will be penderm den Badir over here sure uh you can choose all kinds of different off uh, outfits for your leader you can use uh you use the right analog stick to cycle through these menus so we can have oh actually i quite like the uh the sort of um uh, snow leopard or, or lynx sort of, you know, white fur there. That's just for this one character. All your different characters will have different kind of looks. So you can, you can go and tune this. It's not a, it's not really a big deal, but it looks kind of neat. So we've got that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the right bumper and we're going to go to the home world screen now. So the home world, we need a name for it. And again, we can just randomize it. Actually kind of like Adnor. Sounds okay to me. Adnor and our star name will be Adnir. I think that's that's kind of swell. If we go down here, our starting solar system, random is usually what you're gonna pick, but you can, oops, pick the soul system. That's the system we live in, in real life, right? With an Earth and a Mars and Jupiter and whatnot. So you'd get a solar system that would look very much like our, our real life solar system. There's also another pre-made one here with denim. Just just would have fixed, you know, star and planet names. But you can just randomize it, which will be quite interesting. We're going to go with that. Um, then we've got to pick what kind of planet class our home world will be. And this will mean, this will, will affect what planets we are most comfortable colonizing. For example, maybe our home world is going to be a desert world over here. So our people would prefer to colonize desert worlds. They'd also be okay with other dry worlds. So for example, here we've got an arid world and a savanna world. Those would be okay. But really the, the desert one is the one that we all be more, most comfortable in. So it's gonna affect uh, the planets we find, which ones we're gonna wanna try to colonize. There's wet worlds here, ocean, continental and tropical. And then finally frozen worlds of tundra, alpine, and Arctic over here. Now, there is absolutely no difference between the planets other than the fact that you're gonna colonize some versus the other. Like, there's not one that's better than the others. All the stats will be exactly the same once you get in game, it makes no difference whatsoever. So you're basically just trying to think, hmm, what would be the best fit over here? And I'm gonna say that our cat people are actually alpine cat people. So again, I'm sort of thinking snow leopards and things like that, as opposed to maybe lion type people that would live on the savanna or maybe uh, tiger type people who would live more in jungles. Yeah, we're going to go with an alpine world. I like that. That's going to be fine. We've got one other thing we can pick over here. If we go down to the city appearance, this just affects the background through that window over there. Again, no, no true uh, in-game impact. Well, I guess we'll pick mammalian because we're mammalians or we're mammals, I should say. There we go. Okay. Let's tab over to the Empire screen. So this is a screen that is very important because 
your empire statistics, your empire traits will affect everything that goes on in your civilization. Now, there are a variety of different ways that these traits may change over the course of the game, but more or less, I'm gonna say that these traits are going to basically be permanent. Now, there are three categories to play with on the screen. There's these ethics that you can choose. There's the authority level. It's basically the type of government. So are you democracy? Are you um, more of an oligarchy? These names will change a little bit as well, depending on what ethics, but basically there's four categories. Democracy, elections over 10 years. Oligarchy, elections every 40 to 50 years. Constitutional dictatorship, so there's no election. There's, or sorry, there's an election when your ruler dies. And then finally, imperial, or sort of a monarchy, where you have a designated successor every time you die. Um, the difference between the governments are not that major, but one of the things that I got you is certain ethics and certain civics require certain governments. So you'll see that once you make your picks. Okay, let's talk about ethics over here, because this is actually very important. There are sort of four categories of ethics, four, I don't know, sliders you might think of them as. For example, over here, you have militarist ethics, all from fanatic militarist, regular militarist, regular pacifist, and fanatic pacifist. If you pick, say, pacifist, you can't also be militarist. It, it, this, this toggles from one to the other. You can't be both. You're picking one thing on this particular scale. But you could be, say, a militarist and an egalitarian. See, we're both militarist and egalitarian. Now, we have three points to spend for ethics here. The regular level of an ethic is one point. The fanatic level is worth two points. And this will have a fairly significant impact on what civics you can pick, how your, your government feels, even the flavor text of events will change dramatically on your ethics. And very importantly, how other species react to you will depend on your ethics quite a bit. So if, um, let's say you're a militarist, and you meet someone who's a pacifist, they won't like you very much. Um, one way to get lots of people to like you is to be a xenophile. So down here, we've got the xenophobe versus xenophile. Xenophobe, we don't like other races. Xenophile, we love other races. Um, so if you're a xenophile, then everyone will generally like you more. You can see on the right over here, it says increased opinion for other species. Other species are gonna like you because, well, you like them. So they know that you're not gonna to be too mean to them, probably. It also has an impact on various policies and uh, rules that you can enact while in game. So for example, if we are egalitarians, we won't be able to have any kind of slavery or anything like that. But we're, if we're authoritarian, then we'll be able to do that kind of stuff. So there's a bunch of stuff. So again, the four major categories are your sort of militarist versus pacifist. There's egalitarian versus authoritarian xenophobe versus xenophile and then finally there's spiritualist versus materialist um there's no right or wrong answer for any of this again it's going to flavor your empire a lot but there's lots of different viable options that you can do F figure out something that has sort of feels right for you and your species i will say this the spiritualist has really cool events really i love the flavor of the spiritualist governments our cat people here, I'm gonna say, what are we gonna be? I think we might be slightly militarist. You know, maybe we won't, we won't have to go like fanatic, but a little bit militarist, I think that's gonna be okay. And, do we not like people? I'm gonna say we like people. Tell you what, let's go a little xenophile and a little spiritualist. So we're not going to be fanatic in everything, but there we go. So uh, spiritualist, your people, what, I mean, it, it affects what technologies we can research, different buildings we can build, uh, and again, flavors a lot of the events, but it also will give us reduced unrest, and governing ethics attraction means your people are likely to keep going with the ethics that your empire has. So our militarist, xenophile, spiritualist, like we like other species, but we're also willing to fight for our rights is what's gonna happen over here, which is kind of nifty. So, and you can see the government name has changed, Theocratic Republic, because we're spiritualist. Um, let's go with the monarchy. Who doesn't like being king? I, I'm gonna go ahead and be king. All right, so now we've got to pick our civics over here. We've got two points to spend, and all of these always give you a boost to something. They all do something radically different. You can see some grayed out ones down here because we can't take them because we don't meet some sort of criteria. So for example, Beacon of Liberty, we need to be at least somewhat egalitarian um, and democratic as well to be able to pick this. So there's a bunch of things we can't pick down here. That's okay. Uh, in terms of what we're gonna take, 
I don't know. You know what? I'm going to take Cutthroat Politics. Influence is great. Plus, I think it makes sense. I mean, our, our cats... The, we're not we're not pack animal cats. We do a little bit of internal fighting. So I think the uh, cutthroat politics is going to make sense. And then... Maybe we'll have a warrior culture. I'm, I, that's not a terribly powerful pick. Army damage and army upkeep is not terribly relevant in the game, to be honest. But I think it really fits what we're building here. I think it tells a good story. So we have a martial empire is what it's going to call our government type. Sounds good to me. So... Next thing we have to do is we have to pick our flag over here and our empire name. Once again, we can name our empire whatever we want, and we can pick any flag we want. We've got a bunch of different categories over here. We can pick an emblem. Once we've done that, we can change what our color is, the primary and secondary color, and we can change the, sh the background of our flag as well. So lots of options to do what you want. If we just go ahead and hit randomize, the great Raltech empire sounds good. I really, I quite like the flag it picked. I think... I'm going to change the background here like that. And I think I'm also going to change the colors. What if, what if we had black in the middle? Ooh, dark purple. Hmm. And the gray. Okay. I kind of like this actually. That's going to be our flag. Excellent. So we're going to go over to the next tab now. Ships. So, there's, a, there's two little things to choose here. There's your starting weapon and your ship appearance. The ship appearance has no impact on gameplay. You can pick whatever you think looks the coolest. We'll go with mammalian because well, we're mammals. Sure, that's fine. And then starting weapon is the other thing that you're going to pick. Now, weapons, you will research many, many different weapons over the course of the game, and you'll be able to use any kind of weapon you want. This just tells, just decides what your starting weapon technology will be. Either projectile weapons, so pew pew bullet guns, energy weapons, laser beams, and missile weapons. We are cats. I think we like laser pointers, so we're gonna go with energy weapon. There's really no, there, there are some differences between these weapons in terms of gameplay. Some do better versus shields, other do better versus armor. There's different things like that, but there's not a big deal difference in terms of what you pick right away. And again, when you research technology, you will be able to use any tech, any weapon that you want over the course of the game. This is just what, what weapon do you start with? Finally, we've got the summary tab over here. We can look over and make sure we're comfortable with this. Yeah, so the great Raltech Empire. I love it. It's going to be great. So I'm going to hit A to confirm and A again. And what, it's do what it did, it just saved the Empire. So now, if ever we play another game, we could start a new game as this Empire. It's been saved to our list. Or when we start a game, we might, and, and we make someone else, and we play as someone else, we might see the great Raltech Empire in our galaxy. All right, this is the game details to set up. You can choose the galaxy size. Even a small galaxy of 150 stars, that's a lot of stars. This is a big game. Uh, for your first one, I definitely would not start with large. Keep it a little smaller. Let's say we go medium here, just because it's going to make it a little bit more manageable. It'll let you also sort of play through the game a little bit faster for, for your first playthrough. And that's going to be just peachy keen. Galaxy shape just gives a little bit of a difference about how the stars will be placed and positioned. Uh, elliptical is going to be cool. We'll go with that. That's fine. How many AI empires? How many people are you going to face? So the number available here will depend on um, uh, the size of your galaxy. We'll leave it at default of six. So there's going to be us plus seven opponents. Advanced AI starts. This gives you the option of having one of your AI opponents start more advanced. They will have maybe some more planets, maybe a little bit more technology. Uh, it makes them a little bit more of a threat. It's You can set this to zero if you want. It actually does add a little bit of flavor to have one of these be a little bit more powerful. It's the default, so I'm going to leave it in there. You might want to go to zero. I mean, if you really want to have a hard time, you might want to make all your opponents advanced. That would certainly make the game a bit more challenging. I'll leave it at the one. Now, separately from the AI empires, you have an option here for fallen empires, okay, which you could turn off, but you can also leave on. Fallen empires are very cool. These represent empires that used to be major galactic powers years and years and years and years and years ago, but for whatever reason, They've, they've sort of given up on that. They've kind of retreated to just, you know, a couple of core systems maybe, and they're just mostly just sitting there chilling. Different fallen empires will have radically different behaviors and reactions to other people going around them. Some of them are really unfriendly and really don't want anyone coming close to them. Other guys are actually really, really chill. They will interact with you in different ways, and they could also 
um, sort of wake up at some point. These fallen empires might become awakened empires at some point, and they are ridiculously technology technologically advanced and when that happens very terrifying things can happen so we'll leave it on because it's actually really cool you can scale how frequently you might find habitable worlds so i mean we've got 400 stars but how many of them are going to have planets that we can colonize i will just leave it at the one for this how aggressive is the ai how many bonuses have the ai so if you increase the difficulty they will have a bunch of bonuses to their production and science and different things like that um so we'll leave it on normal that's going to be okay empire placement totally random or in little chunks and then advanced neighbors so the advanced ai starts are they allowed to start right next to you or not i would suggest leaving this off so you don't run into them right away end game crises i'm not going to talk about what these are except to say that they're amazing epic and terrifying I definitely recommend playing with this on because it's awesome. At some point, something crazy will happen and possibly the entire galaxy will have to band together to defeat whatever might happen. There are many different ones of these. It's totally worthwhile. And then finally, you have Iron Man mode option here. Iron Man means you, you don't you no longer manually save the game. The game gets automatically saved for you. It only has one save slot, so you can't like realize oh i've made a mistake and go back to a previous version of the save if you want achievements you have to turn this on we're going to turn it off for the purpose of this video and when you're learning well honestly iron man's kind of fun because yeah you can't go back if you've made a mistake which is probably the best way to play it but for me making my tutorial i'm going to leave this off because it might uh i may have to go back and re-record an episode so i'm going to go ahead and pl hit play at this point and start a new game it's going to generate the galaxy for us and we'll take a look at the controls so we get, once we pop in, we do get an initial little write-up about our empire. And the text on the right does change depending on what picks you've made in setting up your race over here. So it's worth taking a read through when you make your own species because it'll give it a little bit of flavor, which is really cool. I'm going to hit A to begin. So let's look at the screen. If we go ahead and hit the big, the main menu button over here, and we go down to settings and tab over to controls. You can get a list of what all the buttons do over here. There's multiple control schemes to cycle through as well if you would like. I will leave it on the default here for the purpose of the tutorial, absolutely certainly. Um, so there are a lot of buttons mapped here, but it's actually really, really, really easy to get into. So your two analog sticks let you move your view around. Your left stick just lets you sort of pan around like this, and your right stick lets you rotate the view. Currently, we are in the solar system, uh, like our, our home solar system, right? This is the one, I mean, Adnir, because that was the random name, and my home world over here is Adnor. Um, with the two trigger buttons, I can zoom in or zoom out. Here, let's zoom in on the star over here. Everyone make sure to wear your sunscreen. So it looks gorgeous. You can get some really nice views of things. You can uh, move around here. We've probably got some ships parked in orbit. Yeah, there we go. We've got a little bit of a fleet kicking around. We have a star base around the planet here looks pretty gorgeous all right if you go and push down on the right analog stick you will toggle out from your system view into the galaxy view so we can zoom out here and take a look at the entire galaxy so this is us over here we've got a highlighted area this is our general territory this green area this is territory we consider to belong to us and this will grow as we build new colonies and different things like that on new stars. More territory will be considered to be ours. There's technologies and different policies and things like that you can run to make your border expansion uh, a little bit more aggressive so it'll blob out more. When we do run into another empire, they will have their own borders and we will start to scrooch up against them. And that can lead to just a little bit of tension, we will say. But you can see here, uh, the galaxy, there's a lot to this galaxy, really, because each, each solar system has, let me go and hit the right stick again to come in here, each solar system has, you know, potentially multiple planets, and it's possible that more than one planet in a solar system is colonizable. It's also possible none of them will be, or at least for you, right? We're looking for alpine worlds, or ideally at least cold worlds. There could be, you know, there could be some desert planets in here that other species would be very happy to live, but we consider it to be completely 100% garbage that we'd never want to colonize. Um, so, okay, so we've got the moving around. That's great. That's your general sort of like uh, navigation. The other thing you can do is use the D-pad and that will interact with the various aspects of the screen. So for example, if I hit up on the D-pad, I'm in this top, I was gonna say menu. It's not really a menu. There's actually nothing for you to interact with on the top. Well, 
sure you can access your research screen but let's let's not go into that right now what this does is it takes a look at what resources we have so we can look at our energy credits our minerals our food our influence our unity and we'll go through what all of these things mean um over the you know the, the course of the next couple of videos here but we can look at what we've got and see well where is it coming from um and get get a bit of description so we've got our science rates over here this is the planets we directly control strategic resources hmm, we don't know what that is but we'll find out later and our naval capacity we currently have three ships total in our navy and we have a naval capacity of 14. if we were to go over our naval capacity we'd have to pay a bunch in maintenance if we hit b we can stop being in the top menu mode if we hit the left arrow on our d-pad then we are in the left menu over here with lots of different options if we hit down then we are in this is just a little notice notice bar down here there'll be a little icon whenever there's something you should probably deal with for example here we're being told oh we're not actually researching anything in any of these categories you should probably probably deal with that. The big thing with this game, keep an eye on this bottom bar for notifications and respond to those and you're going to do pretty good. We're just going to ignore that for now. I'm going to hit B to go back to my main view. And if I hit the right arrow key, I'll be in the outliner. This gives you a list of every planet you have, every military fleet you have, every civilian ship you have, your rally points, and there may be some other things in this outliner later on. You can toggle these little categories. So later on, if you have lots of planets, you can go and hide that list to focus on other things depending on how things go you also have the option down here in the outliner to hide the outliner if i hit a so we're now in hide outliner mode if i hit b just to get out of this you can see the outliner is hidden i can still hit the right arrow to bring it up whenever you whenever i want so if you want a little bit more screen real estate you can toggle that off personally i really like to leave it on um yeah i mean it's fairly large but I really like to keep an eye on all my fleets and everything like that to make sure that people are busy. And so I like to have the outliner vis visible personally. So that's the, the main UI. Um, let's go ahead and just show you one more little thing to whet your appetite for the next episode. If I go ahead and zoom into our star system over here and I go over to my home world of Adnar, so I click A to select it, this screen is our colony screen. You can see there's a lot of tabs that we can interact with on this particular colony. And that's what we'll be looking at in the next episode. We'll also be looking at unpausing the game. You can see in the bottom left corner of the screen over there, you've got the little blinking pause icon. The game is currently paused. The game is played in real time, but you can pause whenever you want. It is currently the year 2200. It is January the 1st in the year 2200. The game is paused. If we were to unpause it, the days would start ticking away. And then you can pause it again. It's the Y key, hitting or the Y button on your, on your uh, controller. Toggling Y will pause and unpause the game. If you hold down the Y key, it will change the game speed. So you can cycle from fast mode to slow mode to medium mode as you uh, as you like. But we'll get to that um, next time. Thank you very much for watching. And hopefully you'll find these useful. This is, I believe, going to be about five parts over here as we go through the different aspects of running your empire, moving your ships around, and having a happy and prosperous people, and maybe crushing all your enemies. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.